Scleroderma can be difficult to diagnose, especially in the early stages. A thorough physical exam and health history is needed. Skin thickening in association with typical scleroderma clinical manifestations usually leads to diagnosis. For a review of scleroderma signs and symptoms, watch this video. Blood tests may be used to diagnose scleroderma. Antinuclear autoantibodies are present in nearly all patients with systemic sclerosis. Antisyndromere antibodies are found in most patients with Crest syndrome, which is associated with limited cutaneous type of systemic sclerosis. If the kidneys are affected by scleroderma, the urinalysis may show proteinuria, casts, and microscopic hematuria. Creatinine levels may be increased. For lung involvement, pulmonary function tests, EFTs, show decreased vital capacity and lung compliance. A chest x-ray may exhibit bilateral pulmonary fibrosis, which is damaged and scarred lung tissue. Nail bed capillary microscopic studies may also be performed to establish diagnosis. Capillary abnormalities in combination with Raynaud's phenomenon are suggestive of systemic sclerosis. An electrocardiogram may be performed to detect arrhythmias, changes in cardiac muscle tissue, and cardiac conduction disorders. Many scleroderma patients are afflicted with those complications. The goal of treatment for scleroderma is to force the disease into remission and slow its progress. Thus, supportive care aims to prevent or treat secondary complications in the affected organs. There is no cure for scleroderma, and no specific drug therapy has been proven effective in treating the disease. Though certain medications may be prescribed to help manage symptoms. Physical therapy may be ordered to assist with joint mobility and preservation of muscle strength. Occupational therapy may be prescribed as well to help the patient continue with normal activities of daily living. Nursing assessment practices for scleroderma include monitoring for muscle and joint, pain, stiffness, and weakness, hitting edema of hands and fingers, which progresses to other body areas, taut and shiny skin free from wrinkles, progressive tightness, hardness, and thickness as the skin loses elasticity and adheres to the underlying structures. Other assessment findings include dysphagia, decreased range of motion, inability to perform activities of daily living, and joint contractures. Oliguria and severe hypertension may occur if scleroderma renal crisis manifests. Monitor for cough and dyspnea. Crackles in the lung bases may occur if interstitial lung disease is present. Remember that lung disease is the leading cause of death in scleroderma patients. If you are finding value in this video, then please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And check out the link in the description to purchase an instant digital download of the Immune System and Disorders Nursing Notes, which includes written notes on scleroderma. If scleroderma affects the heart, then symptoms of right-sided heart failure may appear. These symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue, abdominal or lower extremity edema, tachycardia, and irregular heart rate. One of the most important nursing interventions for scleroderma is providing education. Teaching patients and caregivers is important as they learn to live with the disease. Educate them to protect the hands and feet from cold exposure, as well as possible trauma to those areas. Emotional stress and cold ambient temperatures may aggravate Raynaud's phenomena. Advise the patient to avoid finger stick blood tests as compromised circulation may lead to poor healing of the fingers. Also educate them regarding signs of infection and to report those signs immediately. Encourage the patient to perform activity as tolerated. Also counsel them to perform therapeutic exercises to assist with range of motion, prevent skin retraction, and promote vascularization. 
Lotions may be used for dry skin, but must be rubbed in for a long time due to thickened skin. For patients with dysphagia, provide small, frequent meals and do not give foods that stimulate gastric secretions, such as caffeine, spicy foods, and alcohol. If the patient experiences heartburn, administer antacids as prescribed and have the patient remain upright for at least two hours after eating. Raise the head of the bed at night to reduce nocturnal gastroesophageal reflux. Administer drug therapy as prescribed. Nephetapine, diltiazem, and losartan are sometimes used to treat Raynaud's phenomenon. Corticosteroids may be prescribed for inflammation, but typically have little effect on scleroderma. Capsaicin cream may be useful for local pain relief and as a vasodilator. Proton pump inhibitors may be used for esophageal symptoms, such as heartburn. Provide emotional support to scleroderma patients and their caregivers, and encourage them to utilize resources to cope with the disease. Many patients require job modifications. Monitor for signs of depression as some patients may begin to isolate themselves due to changes in appearance and feelings of embarrassment as they have difficulty performing everyday normal activity. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day.